Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday, sponsored by FanDuel. Today, we are opening a hobby box of 2008 Topps Heritage. So I feel like this is kind of a good time to open this up. Heritage is the most recent release out there on the market. Right now, they're featuring the 1972 design, but back in 2008, they were featuring the 1959 Topps design. And what Heritage does is they just progress one year through the Topps back catalog of designs. Next year, they'll be featuring 1973 Topps design in 2022 Heritage. So kind of a cool set. I really like it a lot. Uh, as always, there is one autograph or relic card in each and every hobby box. You can see there's 24 packs in this box, eight cards per pack. And uh, hopefully we can find some good stuff in here today for our sponsor of this video. Jack, thank you very much for letting us open your cards on camera. And I'm hoping we can pull you a nice autograph or at least some good stuff in here. So let's talk briefly about the set. As always with Heritage, there's 500 cards in the base set. And then later on in the year, they put out a high number set, as you're probably familiar with. And look at this. We have some box toppers as well. We have an original 1959 buyback card. Very nice. I like how they have it in this little pack. This year, for whatever reason, uh, Tops just kind of put these buyback cards just floating on the top of the box, which is a little strange. And we also have a 1959 advertising pane or panel. Three baseball cards in one. Let the youngsters know you have 2008. Tops Heritage Baseball Cards. All right, so let's see what we've got. So the pack wrappers that they use every year with Heritage are always the same design as the original pack wrapper. So this is what the packs look like in 1959. Uh, sometimes uh, the color schemes are changed around a little bit. They may flip colors and so on and so forth. Um, but still, that's the basic image right there. So let's go ahead and get to it and see what you can find or what we can find in this video and uh, you can see that there is gum i was wondering why the the pack felt thicker than usual for eight cards it's because they still gave you pieces of gum back in 2008 so here's the 1959 design for those of you learning cards um and designs the 58 and 59 designs are very similar there's a nice brandon phillips chrome card it's out of 1959 and ricky weeks the difference is 58 has the solid colored background and 59 has the cutout in the background a little circle for me personally i feel like if i had to rank all of the designs from the 1950s it would either be 58 or 59 coming in last place for me by the way let's get jack's name a little more prominently on the screen there's Jack Cust and Aaron Harang, Joe Maurer, Edible Sanchez. I guess he was doing a workout today for some teams, maybe trying to make a uh, comeback. There's an Eric Bedard, Black Border. It's out of 59. Nice one right there. Let's get that one sleeved up because of the low number. Alberto Gonzalez, rookie card. Anybody remember him? Not me. Next pack up. We've got a Chris Young on the back, and there's a Hall of Famer, Vladimir Guerrero Sr. Hey, it's Tony Plush, Niger Morgan, one of the uh, colorful characters during this era of baseball. Niger Morgan, you may remember him from the Pirates, from the Washington Nationals, and the Milwaukee Brewers. There's Adrian Beltre, who will be a Hall of Famer someday, and Chris Young, who's like six foot ten, six eleven. How tall is Chris Young? Six foot ten. And I believe he's a, he's a very smart guy. Graduated from an Ivy League school. I can't remember if it was Princeton or Yale or Harvard or one of those big-name schools. But I think he's now uh, working in the front office of Major League Baseball. And there's Edwin Jackson, who played for basically every team in the Major Leagues. <laughs> Almost. I think it was like 13 teams. There's Matt Cain. That's out of 559 Refractor. And Shane Victorino is the last card in that stack. So... Before I go any farther, I always like to show the uh, odds, even though, you know, I don't know if we'll get any of these fantastic hits just by doing one box, but sometimes you'll get lucky. And there's also the no purchase necessary stuff, which is long since expired. Don't waste your stamp by trying to get some free cards from this. Aramis Ramirez, Billy Butler, there's Adam Jones in his Seattle Mariners uniform. 
Juan Uribe, Jimmy Rollins. Hey, there's A Rod, a new age performers, and Robbie Cano. Who, if you're wondering what happened to Robbie Cano, he uh, got in trouble with baseball and is facing a season long suspension for PEDs. Lastings Millage, who a lot of people thought Millage was going to be the real deal. A lot of people in the Mets organization thought he was going to be good. Nationals organization, Pirates. But it just never worked out for him. Had a nice amount of power. But just, uh, you know, did pretty well in the minors. But just didn't really uh, stand up to the big leagues. There's a Barry Zito. There also are short prints in here. I was looking at the checklist briefly. I believe the last 75 cards have uh, are, are short printed. There's Clay Buckhole's rookie card. Now that one would have been a good one back in the day. He used to be pretty darn good for a couple seasons. And then there's Justin Verlander, an early Justin Verlander card. Of course, his rookie card is 2006. You might be wondering, what's the best rookie card you can find in this? Well, unfortunately, the Clayton Kershaw, which you know is usually the, the best rookie card of 2008, he's in Heritage High numbers, so... Hey, there's Dimitri Young, who basically almost drove himself into a bankruptcy by buying a whole bunch of PSA 10 top-of-the-line baseball cards back in the day. And uh, I think he may have spent, like, I don't know, a couple million on his cards. Any idea what his collection would be worth today? I, I bet you it would be worth, like, ten times what it was worth. So if only poor Dimitri would have hung on a little longer to his cards. I think he ended up selling most of them. I'm not too familiar with the story of his collection but i do know that he had a whole bunch of super high-end and valuable cards there's chin lung who um no idea who that is by the way ryan spielborgs is a very nice um announcer i really like listening into him on mlb network radio on my two-hour commute every day there's a john smoltz he's a hall of famer john papelbon just never could get into papelbon i don't know what it was about him Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman and Andy Pettit. Maybe someday Pettit gets in. Probably not. He did have the HGH uh, PED thing when he was with the Astros. And, uh, you know, top-notch pitcher. But here's another guy that's kind of like, uh, I don't know, Andrew Jones. Should he be in? There's Felix P.A., former Bucko, for like a season. Mike Cameron had a great career. And Fidel Castro gets a card in this. Andrew Jones is an interesting character because he was so dominant for about a decade. Definitely the best center fielder for like 10 years straight. And um, just kind of lost it there in his early 30s. There's Carlos Beltran, another guy who would be in the Hall of Fame. But uh, no, I don't, I don't think he's going to get in. He was the mastermind or one of the masterminds of the Astros cheating scandal. J.R. Tolls, that name rings a bell. And there's Derek Jeter, nice card right there. By the way, Derek Jeter has one of the nicest signatures in baseball. I don't know what it is, but it seems like this uh, this new crop of players coming up in 2020, their signatures are just, I don't want to say they're garbage or crappy, but they're just lazy. Um, you can't even really read it. Even like as, as far back as 2008, I'm seeing a lot of nice signatures on here. Like Bronson Arroyo took the time to even write his middle name on there. If you go back as far as like the 50s, like the mid 50s when they used to print the autos on the cards in like 55 or 56 or and years like that, those signatures were like, uh, man, it just looked like calligraphy. They were so nice. Dave Bush, there's Clint Sammons. Brad Lidge, another great announcer slash color commentator. And good old Ronnie Paulino from the Buccos is the last card there. So we're still looking for our autograph or relic for Jack. And uh, the top rookie card that we're looking for right now is Joey Votto. There's Justin Ruggiano, a rookie card. Hall of Famer Tom Glavin. What's up with the, uh, I don't know, the picture here almost looks pixely. Like they uh, had like a, a picture of him and just zoomed way in on him. I don't know. I don't know if that... If you see what I'm seeing or not, uh, there's Randy Wynn, Marcus Giles, younger brother to um, Brian Giles. And here's one of the worst pirates of all time, Matt Morris. We gave him a $10 million contract or something like that. And we have his Pittsburgh line. There he is, 6'10 earned run average. He was absolutely horrendous for us. And um, pretty much cost, uh, who, was the, who was the GM back then? Might have been Littlefield. Might have been the end of Dave Littlefield. 
All right, next up, we've got Dustin Pedroia. There he is, the laser show. He's now retired. Lance Berkman, another one of the major stars from this era, and another major star from this era, El Caballo, Carlos Lee. There's Ichiro, who was doing his thing right in the middle of his Hall of Fame-worthy career. New Age performers, Ryan Howard. This is the year after his MVP award. I think he won the MVP in 2007. And we're down to our last stack for Jack. We've yet to hit the uh, the autograph or relic yet. I'm hoping it's an autograph. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, what if I missed the auto? I sure hope I didn't. We may have to go back through all these and double check all these signatures and see if any of them weren't in blue ink. Sometimes they, sometimes I'll miss the signature when it's printed on there like this with all the cards with printed signatures. It just kind of blends in, especially if it's done over like a dark background. It's kind of like that one. There's Prince Fielder, who had the same amount of career home runs as his pops. There's Mickey Mantle. That's a nice card right there. Mantle and Big Poppy. Of course, Mickey Mantle's back with tops now. You'll be seeing him. I don't know when the debut of Mickey Mantle cards will be, but I would hope it would be in 2021 Top Series 2. I think that would be a nice time for him to come back. That's a set that's going to have a wide reach, large print run. Um... What is Tori Hunter doing right there? Making that face, and uh, somehow that must have been the best picture he gave the cameraman that day. There's Nick Markakis. That one's going to be out of 1959. Little Tori Hunter hamming it up on picture day. So we've got about five packs left and zero autographs or relics so far. There's Hall of Famer Roy Halladay. Brad Wilkerson, there's Khalil Green. We've got a Freddie Garcia and a Jason Bartlett. Brian Roberts had some nice seasons for sure. And Carlos Silva is the last card in this one. All right, so four packs left. Hope everybody's having a nice day. Make sure you check us out tomorrow, by the way. We'll have a double feature video of the boom box. I've got two boom boxes to open up. There's Dave Roberts, now the manager of the... Los Angeles Dodgers. Aaron Rowan, what, Rowan wasn't afraid to go and get the ball. Always crashing into the wall. And Vladimir Ballantin, who was a um, big power bat in the minors, went over to Japan and just became um, kind of like a Babe Ruth type character, hitting a ton of home runs over there. Never really caught on here. David Murphy, John Lackey. We've got Kurt Suzuki. There's Edgar Gonzalez. I don't remember him. Jason Veritek. We've got Luis Aparicio and the X-Man, Xavier Nady. So we're down to two packs right now. I'm feeling a little bit of uh, anxiety because we haven't found the autograph yet. And I, I'm thinking, what if I miss the auto? Am I going to have to go back through everything and check? There's Jim Edmonds near the end of his long, illustrious career. Of course, Edmonds' rookie card was 1993 top, Series 2, Future Stars card. And I love that card. Paul Bird, Jason Jennings. And Ross Detweiler rookie card. So we're down to our last one. We have not found a hit yet. It comes down to the last pack. Some last pack magic. We've got Randy Johnson, the big unit, leading things off. Then there's Orlando Hernandez, Garrett Atkins. We've got the O-Dog, Orlando Hudson, Jamie Moyer. And there it is in the very last pack. It is the National League Most Valuable Player from the previous season. It's an authentic game-worn jersey of Ryan Howard from the Philadelphia Phillies. So, Jack, congratulations on that one. And, man, the second-to-last card, this box had me sweating it a little bit because sometimes with these Heritage cards, I do miss the autographs and I have to go back and find it again. I didn't want to spend, like, five minutes searching for that. That would have been awkward. But we've got it. The Ryan Howard is the hit of the box. So, Jack, thank you very much, and thank you to all of you guys for watching. I hope uh, you have a great rest of your Thursday. If you like these Throwback Thursday videos, we've got playlists linked in the description. You can check it out there. Also, make sure you check out my associate link with FanDuel. If you click on that link in the description, it's uh, fanduel.com backslash jabs family, and complete your registration there. Put a couple bucks in your account and play a game. I get credit for the sign-up, and uh, maybe they'll re-up with me when my uh, sponsorship deal is up with them. Uh, near the end of April. So uh, if you could do that, that would be awesome. Uh, just to let you know real quickly what's coming up this weekend. We've got Friday, two boom boxes, the $100 one and also the high-end one. It's a $60 box. We've got a really nice Saturday showdown for you with Topps Definitive. That's the $2,000 a box uh, for eight cards. That's a Saturday showdown this week. That'll be fun. And then Sunday, we've got our 2021 Topps Tribute Break. So lots of great stuff coming up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also hit the thumbs up button for me. I'd very much appreciate that. 
And that'll do it for today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody. And we're back for one more note. I was cleaning off all this crap over here, all this gum, and I almost, almost forgot Jack's buyback card and his advertising pin. So let's check those out. Sorry about that. I like doing videos in one take, and... Um, can't always get that done. So here we go. Take two. I'll edit this in and put it at the end. So here is the uncut sheet. Brian Bannister, Manny Ramirez, and Randy Johnson. We already saw that Randy Johnson. Here's what the backs of the cards look like. And by the way, the backs of the uh, 58 cards, I probably should have um, showed you those. But it's just the original 58 style design. Um, nothing crazy going on, but still very, very cool. I think Heritage does a very nice job. Now here's the original 59 buyback card, which got buried underneath the gum and forgotten about. It is going to be a, oh, this could be interesting. It's a Buck Hill Aces card featuring Bob Friend, Vance Law, Elroy Face, and I don't know who Klein is, but that is a very interesting, cool-looking card right there. So congratulations on that, Jack. And it's got the 50th anniversary tops stamp on there, so a cool one. And now that will do it. Again, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.